Um, okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So there's a bunch of stuff in contributing and then you added the code of conduct. Is that, um, That's, that is straight up, you know, and maybe that, oh, you know what, that's, I just copied too much there, so I should fix that. Okay. Because, because um, the people certainly shouldn't be listed, or they should be different people. Um, but should they? Um, here's, here's my question. Should we have a single code of conduct document that we link to from all of the repositories? Or should yes. we be okay? <laughs> yeah, I I agree. Yeah, and we should have sort of a standard like chaos um, escalation points that aren't different per project. I think probably. I agree. That would be great. Okay. So we do have an escalation point. It's a mailing list, and I'm one of the code of conduct enforcers. <laughs> Make that right. sound really foreboding <laughs> because this is uh, um, oh no this does have the same list okay sorry I was looking down at the oh the version history was what I was looking at um, okay yeah yeah okay that makes more sense um, so that's kind of a bigger action item probably for somebody to take across all of the repositories to submit that change and what what becomes the what, what becomes the canonical source that we link to is there a code of conduct in the governance I repo think. that we link to or is it should we be linking to the one on the website I always like to point people to the one on the website just because it looks nicer but we, the one on governance is identical and I want to have both in governance because that's our document for changing it and then the website the one that is public one thing we should just check is github scans the repositories um, to see if there is a code of conduct document so we probably need a markdown that's got that title and it probably is okay that we link and the only reason that matters is because github will sort of not promote your project as much if okay. you don't have all the right pieces in place Nope, I agree with that. So we should probably have a code of conduct.md in each of the repositories, but that code of conduct MD should link to the actual code of conduct as opposed to copy and pasting the code of conduct. Yeah. I think Matt, you were going to say something. I saw you come off mute. Yeah. How, how does that work? So they would have a every, every repository, every single repository would have a code of conduct that marked down. And when you click on it in the repo, it just forwards you somewhere else. But when probably has a link. Markdown, there's a link in there. That's it. Yeah. When you when you click on the code of conduct.md file, what you would what you would see is the the code of conduct for all of the chaos projects can be found at, and then you know the link something something like that. How does how does Kubernetes do this? Do you want me to remove the code of conduct MD for now, or do you want me to leave it there as is uh, for this pull request? You, uh, I would leave it for now. In a, in a repo, can you link out to an external markdown file? I know that sounds like a silly question. If it's public, yeah, you can link to anything. You just probably have to provide the fully qualified URL. What does it look okay, like? Okay, so, so what it looks like here, let me, let me share. Let me share this. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So this is what Kubernetes does. So it just basically, this is the code of conduct.md file. And it just basically says that this is the one we, this is the one we have. Follow. And this is okay. how you report it. Okay. So we could model it after, after that one if we wanted. I mean, that seems. Well, every, every repository would just have a code of conduct.markdown and they would all look exactly like this outside of yes. the back of Kubernetes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good enough to do. Um, yeah. 
Is that something that we should discuss at um, on the mailing list before we make that change? Should we just have somebody, does somebody want to just take the action item to make the change? Why don't we, uh, let's boot it to, next week is the monthly call okay. for, for the community on Tuesday. So let's just push it to that. Okay. We do have a code of conduct in governance. I could change the commit to simply follow the Kubernetes model for common and then address it across chaos. In that why, don't, why don't you do that, Sean? Because yeah. then we'd have like a model of what it would look like yeah. to talk about on Tuesday. I'll do that. Yeah, that would be good. All right. Georg, can you put that on your agenda um, for today? Yep, I was just looking for our Google Doc to put it down. Thanks. Um, and I was just going to look at my calendar to see if I can actually attend next week. Yeah, I think I actually can come next week to the formal meeting. Okay, um, sure. And then we have the focus areas. Um, does this does this pull request uh, conflict with Georg's? Um, I don't know. Find out. What? I don't think it conflicts because my pull request only edits the top level readme. I do not add a focus area folder or anything. Okay, so you didn't add it because uh, this adds the focus areas directory, I think, slash. Cause... Correct. My pull request does not do that. Okay. Okay. Do we have so... an email we want abusers or instances of harassment to be sent to for now? Yes, it is listed in the code of conduct. Oh. Yeah, it's right. It's right here. I will go look at the code of conduct. Hang on. Yep. Um, okay, and so then we have a template. This case is formula. Oh, um, hmm. How many templates are there? A example template. Yeah. I a could. template. There's kind of two. Yeah. Okay. There's one, DNI uses one that's different than what evolution uses. Mm -hmm. And so in the, like the um, rules for doing a release, it says you just have to have a template behind the metric, but it doesn't specify what that template is. The example template's a little bit, it's got more info in it, but mm -hmm. you might not actually follow some of those structures. Um, although I, I might I guess the uh, it's probably the activity metric stuff list is the thing to take out or I could just use the why don't I copy the markdown section at the bottom what are you talking about here? I'm looking at a example template and there's some top matter that maybe we don't want, but there's a nice markdown example defining each section. Okay. So maybe delete the one and add the markdown to it. So I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I've thought a little, I've thought a bit about the fact that there are two different templates mm -hmm. in the chaos project. Yeah. And I'm, I've actually come down on the side that I'm okay with that because really what the goal is is to provide detail behind the metric. And I just don't think that what the metrics that, for example, DNI puts forward and just really map to the same style of templates. I'm going to yeah. delete a example metric to make it simpler and add the markdown descriptions to it. So this is the template, the one I'm sharing. This is the template yes. that we use for the diversity and inclusion working yep. group, which is very different. And this yep. is, um, this one's good for things that tend to be a bit more, um, less code oriented. Yep. I wonder if we should add both templates or... I could add the the resource so 
is it the resource page.md in GNI? Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know why we called it that. That must be a holdover from something else. Um, in the releasing that markdown, the one that provides guidance for releasing metrics, mm -hmm. it actually links to both example templates. Okay. Just saying, for example, here's a couple. And because really, I think that at the heart of the matter is we're just trying to get detail behind the metric. Mm -hmm. That's really what it comes down to. Yep. Um, so, and, and whether or not we need to standardize those templates, I just, I hadn't, I hadn't convinced myself that that was completely necessary at the moment. No, I don't, I don't think we can really standardize them because some, there's just sort of different, different types of metrics, I think. Um, I just want to have both both templates, I guess, or or we can just link to we could link to the template in the um, evolution mm -hmm. repo, and we could link to this template in the DNI. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a preference either way. We can link to the other templates in the other repos, or we can link to, or we can just duplicate the templates it probably makes it easier to duplicate the templates that way if somebody's cloned the repo and they're looking at it they can just grab the template and make a copy of it yeah i think it also makes it easier if we want to make changes specific to our work group as we evolve that we don't get in trouble yep okay talk to me into it plus one yep. cool um okay and then there's a Let's see, file name convention, dashes, not underscores. Yeah. Um, That's again, just evolutions model, so. Oh, but, but we have here, we have in the, we have underscores in the template folder name. Oh, but th yeah, and that's, that convention is actually what the uh, evolution does they use dashes in the m markdown names and underscores in the folder names <laughs> just you know it's not like we had a big meeting about it <laughs> uh what did we do working group uh, yeah so diversity and inclusion we standardized i think didn't we standardize on dashes for everything we did I believe we have yes okay yeah. so we, i can change that Okay. That's easy. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes sense if we're going to use dashes for file names, we should use them for the you bet. folders too, just to make it easier. Okay. Um, I'm updating. So when you get through this, I'm making the changes that you're recommending. <laughs> cool. Um, metrics schema document, the template folder. Um, how was the metrics, how was this document used, the schema? I'm not sure, but it looked useful. <laughs> um, how do you use it for uh, evolution? So essentially, um, the intention is that this would be something that tool developers would include inside of tooling to provide metadata um, for where the data generated comes from, what version of the tool, what version of the schema. Okay, so we're not using this for our releases. This is a template for people who are consuming our metrics so that they can. Building tools, exactly. Okay, okay. So probably probably wouldn't hurt to maybe make that a little more clear about the use, use of it. Yep. <sighs> Pull requests, code reviews, initiated contributors dash new template. New contributions of initiated code reviews. I I don't understand this one. Um, that's I deleted that. That's also um, it was an it was intended to be an example of an actual metric, but it never actually okay. evolved to that, and so those are gone in my latest okay. version of a pull request. Okay, cool. So. Um, okay. 
So it sounds like you made most of the changes that we talked about. Um, I'll be I'll be honest. I have meetings the whole rest of the afternoon, so I don't necessarily have time to to go through, review it, and merge it. Given given that it's kind of big, does somebody? I think, I think next week is fine too, or if somebody else wants to take it. Um. Yeah. Does somebody else have time to do it? I can look through it. Okay. This would be nice because then new pull requests for metrics can go against this. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I would like to get this merged sooner rather than later just because I think yeah. it's going to make it easier for us to, to do other stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, yeah. Who are the other committers on the repo that could, because I do allow committers to make changes to the files so you don't have to go back and forth discussion wise. If like your is a maintainer, then he can look at it and actually edit the details of the pull request if something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the listed maintainers are, you know, Georg, you, myself. Um, realistically, there are just other people who actually have commit access on the repo. Yeah. whether they're listed as maintainers or not, or not. So I know, Matt, you have access, I think, to edit pretty much all the repos. <coughs> so they're probably, Jesus probably has similar privileges. Um, so this one, this one is pretty, uh, pretty easy. So I think, so let's just look at those. Oops, look at the files changed. So you added... Um, Added a bunch of people. So what we had before is we had the maintainer section, we had the co contributor section, and we just pulled all of those names and added them in this all contributor section. And that added Andrea Gallo as a new person. Cool. Um, okay, I can just, this one's, this one's pretty, pretty simple. So I can just, uh, I can just, I can just, I'll just merge this one. Yeah. Okay. And then adding focus areas to the README. Um, Sean, did you make changes to the README as well? I, I did, but they should, I mean, I don't know, there might be conflicts, but there might not be. Okay, that doesn't look like there are any conflicts. Um, we certainly wouldn't have edited the same thing, yeah. Yeah, what we'll probably end up with when we merge yours is a duplication of the focus areas, because I think you added it and Georg added it. And Georg can edit my, um, like yeah, if there's, I should I take the, I can delete my focus areas read me if that's helpful, or we no, can no, just. Leave it, I'll update it here okay. after we merge this one. Okay. 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 Cool. So now we just have the one, and then, uh, although, oh, uh, it looks like maybe your new commits don't have the DC DCO signed off by. Um, Did you forget to do a dash s. They should be in there now. I signed it off, but. If even one of the commits was uh, committed without the dash S, then it, the DCO fails. Do a refresh. I think it's passing now. Not because I did the S, but because I cheated. <laughs> no, it's not passing now. Oh, really? Still, oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. guess I added one thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Can I do that after the fact, or do I have to modify the commit? Uh, I think the way I always do it is I pull down the version and locally amend the last commit and then force push it back up. Okay. I don't think GitHub provides a way to add a, uh, right. change the commit message. It doesn't, but what you can do is you can um, you can rebase to squash the commits and then do a force push, but force push of the squashed commit. So then that. So then it's just the one commit, and that commit has the signed off by. Okay. I'll work on that. 
it should be done okay. in a minute here. Oh, it passes now. Um, okay, now it's done. Yeah. Woo. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so back to oh, issues. This is the other thing we're going to look at. Find the right. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> real time action items, discussion on responsiveness metrics open 14 minutes ago. Well done, Daniel. Woo. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so this is, this is still something though that we need to actively, actively work on, but having the issue here will help us, help us do that. So, so that's good. Um, enable. I have Sean on the call. Sean, oh. mm -hmm. I was looking through your pull request while we were talking, and there was one file that stuck out to me, and it's the in the template folder, the work group diversity and inclusion template. Yeah. Uh, that looks messed up. Oh yeah. I copy it straight from the page. Did you maybe, copy maybe I copied the, maybe I copied the wrong thing. Or the HTML file? Is it HTML? Well, when no, you it's marked down. It, yeah, it's I just, I actually, okay. I may have maybe copied and pasted the wrong thing or maybe maybe what I thought was in my clipboard was not in my clipboard. I'll fix that. Yeah, uh, that could be true. That appears to be the case because I pasted it again and it was the right thing. So Lord knows what I was. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, enable curation of the organizational affiliation list. Uh, oh God, this was okay. This was a long time ago. Um, what is the status of this? I think we started discussing it and yeah. haven't discussed it in a while. <laughs> is that is that something we kind of put off to the side because we were working on a side project with affiliation metrics? Yeah, and I think I think so. Because Toby and I were working on that. Yeah. All but right. No, well, it looks like. This is Toby's thing. Well, no, this is Toby's. Um, this was the original one, but it links oh, well. to, we did reference it. Yeah. Um, let's just, let's just leave them both while we continue to work on the organizational affiliation metrics. And then we could probably uh, close them together. And then what's, the, the, what's the heart of these? Is it, just to be able to identify organizational affiliation or to actually have a maintained list to identify organizational affiliation. Uh, I know when Toby and I were doing it, we, it was metrics to identify. Okay. Um, we weren't really looking at, we weren't making like a sorting hat thing where we were making a review. Like, a, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Although that, that certainly is one possible you know, outcome of it. But we were focusing on the metric side. So this is more like you don't have any sort of curated list. Let's just go kind of blindly into a project and try to figure out where people fall. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Okay. And some of that's going to be easy, like, you know, domain names and sure. things like that. But, you know, federated identity problems when one person moves to another job or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, or in the case of Red Hat, where we don't require work emails to contribute. So okay. that throws off our stats enormously. Of course. Okay. So Sean, when you, when you opened this originally, were you thinking um, of something broader, which is like enabling a curation of email addresses and organizational affiliations as kind of a, like a big project that spans multiple open source communities? Well, in the discussions that I've been on on the call, um, 
that that's what I was thinking. So this was kind of after this was created, I think, on the day of a call or around the day of a call related to a, a pretty deep discussion that I think Brian, I know, I think you were in it and I think there were a few others in it where. No, this was created in 2018. Oh, so this, this was a really long time ago. Under and it was moved. Common? In, no, it was moved into was more, this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was absolutely thinking about a, a broader, and I think thinking about what ends up being the discussion point in this group, I think maybe a central discussion point in this group has been the resolution of affiliations and mapping of emails to the same person. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's been a discussion in this group. So I think that's why this was moved over. And I certainly had a, a, a big, you know, how do we do this as a community mm -hmm. perspective in my mind. Um, right now, I think we can provide tools. Grimoire Lab has Sorting Hat. We do some things with Augur. There are tools that we can use to map email addresses and affiliations. Mm -hmm. I think the question becomes, do we want to have, or do we want to think about something that is shared and trusted? And if, and maybe that's a separate issue, but mm -hmm. briefly, I think we might want to explore the um, Hyperledger Indie project, because I think there's a lot of potential there for people to be able to, by choice, share information across projects uh, on a, you know, depending on how much info I want to give a project or whether I want to allow a project to map my various identities and affiliations mm -hmm. in an automatic way. And it provides some degree of anonymization in, in that information. Uh, and it's also, it doesn't provide a honeypot because there's no, there's no single mm -hmm. honeypot you can go after and it's all encrypted on a blockchain. And then we can use blockchain in chaos and I think our work here is complete. <laughs> Check please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that was a long answer. So it could be yeah. a lot of different things and we could perhaps close this issue now and decide which of those things we want to take up as a group. <clears throat> um, I have some thoughts on this. Go for it. So um, my thought is that something like Indy doing identity management in the blockchain and pushing that management out to people is clearly the, the positive way to go. And if we, I think this addresses perhaps a bit of the issues open here. And I think it would actually also be um, able to help on the DNI side mm -hmm. of things as well as people can manage their own um, identity information. However, that, I think that that's a long way away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to happen this week. No, <laughs> no. So um, I don't think that precludes any any of us from looking at it and trying to make the connections with chaos. However, oh, so then that's point one. Point two is having chaos manage. I think, as you called it, a honeypot or this list of organizational affiliations, just sounds like an absolute nightmare. I don't think we want to get into that business. I, I, and if we use something that's a distributed model like Hyperledger is, then no one, no one organization would have control and no one organization would, would be able yep. to, to have a honeypot to go after. Mm -hmm. I understand. So, so like, yeah. well, I think it would be the, the gold standard. Right. A curated list might be like a <laughs> standard, but maintaining as anybody knows, trying to maintain static lists is a disaster. It just it's doesn't high, work. Well, it has high labor costs. Yeah. yeah. And so kind of the way I look at organizational affiliation is I think the way that Brian and you were talking about it too, Sean, was trying to think about what are the current set of tools we can have without doing blockchain or a curated list that can provide more transparency on organizational affiliation under the current model. It's not perfect. No, I don't think anybody would claim it is. Well, yeah, it's essentially, I think we have the tooling and it's up to each, each deployment of a tool to have someone who uh, updates that list of affiliations and uh, aliases periodically. Um, I think for most long running projects, you could probably take a run through that effort, hire an intern to spend a summer or a year getting it curated 
and, and have something that would be pretty robust and useful for a period of a couple of years before it had to be significantly updated. You could certainly look at all the history with that list that somebody actually went to the trouble inside of an organization to do and, and have a pretty good sense. Um, and then it's up to the organization to decide that it's worth that investment for whatever purpose they have. So this is kind of the, in Grimora Lab, it's the sorting hat. Somebody needs to kind of manage the data in sorting hat. And I think in Augur, it's the facade related stuff. Yeah. Correct? Yep. Okay. So, Sean, do you mind if I give you an action item to update the issue with a bit more of that context yeah. that we just, yeah. mm -hmm. just described? Okay. Yeah. I'll get it done faster than the last one. I set a low bar. I set a low bar. Low expectations are the key. Right. Uh, okay. So that was, which issue was that? Issue number six. Too many tabs open. And do you want me to do you want me to narrow it down to this tool focused organizations responsible for the data question, or do you want me to expand? Do you want me to have the discussion and a comment about the choices of blockchain honeypots you know, to go through some of those nuances? I think it might be helpful to have some of those nuances as part okay. of the issue. Um, okay, I'll lay it all also, out. I also wonder if we should. Um, retitle the issue or something to indicate that it's something to indicate that it's sort of an umbrella issue or like a large scope issue. It's not something that someone's just going to come in and tackle. Yep. Um, um, I don't know exactly how to, how to do that, but that would be helpful. Yeah. I will, I will update that. Okay. Anything I else? Did I miss anything on the, Oh, go ahead, Sean. Let me make one, this is Matt, but let me make one last comment on that. So, and I think this is when, the templates will come into use because if you think about the templates, you know, if organizational affiliation is the metric behind the scenes on that detailed template, that's when it provides examples of implementation. And so these can be examples of how to implement organizational affiliation uh, concerns in the more lab. These are examples of how to, how to move forward on these issues in Augur. Mm -hmm. So I think this is where the templates really involved this discussion as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did I miss anything on the issues, pull requests item before we move into ChaosCon? Okay, so getting back to Matt's question on the agenda, um, ChaosCon submissions, should we submit something from this working group to ChaosCon? Don't all speak at once. Well, the answer is for me is yes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was trying not to just carry the last discussion over, but I, in my mind I was thinking that the, the this organizational affiliation and email aliasing question is, it's been the topic of a lot of discussion in this group. And I think this group seems like the most advanced in its conversation to, mm -hmm. to address that. And it is an important point for the community, but I don't know if we want to take it on and define common that way. Um, so what, what if we did, um, what if we submitted a talk that's basically um, kind of kind of two things? So one is what is what is the common metrics working group? What do we do? And then um, have a big part of that be kind of a deep dive into the organizational affiliation metrics. So it doesn't it doesn't look like all we do is organizational affiliation metrics as a working group, mm -hmm. but it does make it clear that um, that that is that is a big focus for us right now, and is certainly something we could talk about. That would be great. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Okay. Now, who has time to write that up and who would like to present that when we do present it? Well, they're due tomorrow, right? Sort of. Theoretically. I think we, yeah. um, I know Matt doesn't want to extend the deadline until we see how many talks we get, but mm -hmm. since the Linux Foundation didn't promote it yet, I think we almost have to extend it until the 7th. Yeah, so it looks like there's eight days. Eight, nine days. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to me. 
and uh, the overhead on submitting is not high. <laughs> it's it's kind of you know the form I doesn't can put together a first draft. Yeah. Um, so, but so let's uh let, let's talk about this just a little bit more because um I know that for example Brian and Toby have put in a ton of work on the organizational <laughs> affiliation metrics. So if we're going to do a deep dive on that, we probably, I just want to make sure that we submit it with the right person um, leading the discussion or maybe as a joint talk between like Georg and Brian. I just want to make sure that we, we talk about who should do this a little bit more. Yeah, I don't even have to present it. I was just offering to put together a draft for the mm -hmm. submission. I think, I think if Brian and Toby were in a, in a, are going to be there and we're going to, feeling comfortable presenting it, that would be, I think they've really thought about it more deeply and spent more time on it than I know I have. Well, let me, let me, I'll read, okay, so I'll take this. So I'll reach out to Toby, see if he's going to be there, see if he wants to do it, and we'll present some, <coughs> we'll submit some combination uh, thereof in the next day or two. Okay. Great. Thank you. You twisted my arm. Oh, and <laughs> okay, so you have to so say I was going to do something. Um, I was going to do something along these lines anyway because of the work that I've been working on this this spring. You know, mm -hmm. it was going to be a tale of pathos and woe and hospital visits <laughs> and ambulances and things like that. It was going to be awesome. Everybody was going to be riveted. But, <laughs> Maybe I'll make it more professional and work with Toby. Well, if Toby's, if Toby's going, he can do this one and you can do the, the other. No, please don't encourage me right oh, now. Oh, no, I want to hear it. You totally want to hear it now. No, you, you really don't. So there you go. So I'll do that. Cool. Um, anything else on... On ChaosCon. No, outside of just continuing to encourage people to encourage people. Yeah, we do need to really encourage people. I mean, so here, wait, I have access to the, the thing. Let's look at it. Um, we have we have two responses. Um, the diversity of these responses is not good. Just. Um. <laughs> two, two, okay, yeah, so far. Uh, because you're icky boys, is that what we're saying? What's yes, going on? that is totally yeah, what I'm saying. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Icky boys, that's, yes, that's white, it. <laughs> white men. Is DNI submitting anything? Has this come up in DNI? I have missed all the DNI meetings, like Gary? everything else. I don't think we have anything. It doesn't mean we won't maybe create something next week. I mean, to me, it makes a ton of sense for every for every working group to have some presence. Yep. Yeah. It's 20, 20 minutes. It's not hard for, and you. There's been so much work done in each one of these working groups. Mhm. Mm that even just updates and even just kind of this model of updates and then deep dives. And you, you know, you've all been at ChaosCon. A lot of these are more facilitating discussion. Mm -hmm. in Twenty minutes than it is about necessarily presenting. So. Yeah. Okay, so I do think maybe, Garrig, we should add it to the agenda for the DNI meeting okay. to come up with something. I'm opening the doc right now, adding it to the agenda. I, I don't know what other people think, and I'm totally biased because, um, because Daniel and I are the ones that did this, but I thought that the way that we did the diversity and inclusion, um, uh, what was it? It was like a tutorial, and it was really, really interactive, and I thought it actually worked pretty well. Um, where, I think, where was this? Which one? Where? Uh, in Brussels. Okay. I didn't where see we that. actually asked people to, to tackle individual items, and we broke out in groups. Mm -hmm. we, and we, we actually got, the, we got some real work yeah, done. I thought that was great. Yeah, we've done, we've done this in the past. We did it in L.A., where we kind of have a working session. Mm -hmm. and I, I agree. And that's, 
And those are hours that can, not hours, but those are an hour in length. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it was in Brussels, but working sessions are fantastic. And you have a lot of really bright people at these things. Yeah. And thoughtful. it worked, it worked particularly well, I think for the diversity and inclusion working group, because the metrics definitions are a bit less technical. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit harder for some of the other other metrics to get people involved, but you know anybody can be involved when you're talking about like communication inclusivity. That's something that everybody deals with in open source projects. So, so that worked particularly well, I thought. Um, okay, release release spreadsheet. So we came up with. Um, that's not me. Uh, let's see where are we common. Oh, we didn't, did we not do anything? I guess we haven't updated the spreadsheet yet. We have put together the focus group last time and we have not actually listed any metrics within the focus areas yet. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, so this needs, this needs some work. Uh, I have to go in and do this for the risk working group later today. So if, if though, if you want, I can, like, I guess I don't, I guess I, I shouldn't volunteer because I'm not sure what metrics we, we've actually targeted. So that is the point. We cannot update this document we're looking at right now until we actually name some metrics that we're looking at. So mm-hmm. I think we should go back to our own repository and start filling in the focus areas. Okay. Um, what's the what's the deadline for the release? We have a feature freeze in mid June. End of June is feature freeze. Mid June, I think we said like June tenth or June twentieth. Did we say? Yeah, but uh, it, if it can be oh. done in June, that would be great. A month. <laughs> yeah. Twenty days is not enough. Oh, good God. Um, And like I said, I sent out an email to a few people. It's not critical that every working group has metrics ready for release. That's not. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't want you to feel pressure. I'm feeling pressure. But like D and I (laughs) started such a long time ago and common has not obviously been around as long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Or feel the pressure. Let's let's do this thing. <laughs> so, two questions, I guess. Um, do we do we have people who want to take a shot at working in the repository and starting to fill out the oh, Zoom keeps covering up my tabs and I can't I can't click on things. Um, so we have. So I think the organization affiliation is very close to something we can actually um, get ready for publishing. So if we go mm-hmm. back to the issue where we have the Google Doc that Toby and Brian put together, mm-hmm. inside that Google Doc, we have some really good work lately. Yeah. And they're very close to where we just have to name the metrics. Okay, so here's here's what I would suggest. Let's uh, let's take a page out of the uh, the Kubernetes community since that's the community I work in. Um, does someone want to volunteer to be the release team lead for this working group to um, help us sort of get our act together and and pull this stuff together because we can't we can't just do it in these meetings because there's just not enough time if we're going to hit the the feature freeze does somebody have time to be sort of a a release lead and um, kind of talk to the people who are working in all three of these categories and see which metrics we want to focus on and maybe bring it into the next meeting as sort of a proposal for for what we want to do and then help us manage actually getting that out the door. Do we know who these people are, these contact people, like the individuals who are part of, say, responsiveness? 
or have expressed so, interest. So Daniel was looking at responsiveness, and I know Baturgia has done quite a bit of work on, on some of those metrics. Okay. Um, geography, uh, that was, uh, well, let's go to organizational affiliation. That was basically Brian and, to and Toby that were coordinating that one. And then um, geographic was something that, um, wasn't it Andrea? Gallo helped us. Yeah, Andrea helped us do that. Um, but I think a bunch of people have sort of, sort of chimed in, and John Murtick also um, had some feedback on it as well. Yeah, I actually, I actually think John Murtick did probably more of the work than, than some others. Um, okay. So we have we have it in the issues I think for each of these each of these metrics. So we have issues for geographic responsiveness and organizational affiliation. We just really haven't sort of pulled together and kind of focused and then and it would just be nice to have somebody sort of managing kind of following up with people and making sure that we get something in the release even if it's even if it's one metric from each of the areas or maybe yeah. it's maybe we pick an area and go a little deeper i i don't know that i had necessarily have a preference well i'm already kind of in the mode of wrangling, wrangling people anyway <laughs> whether it's on the board or with chaos Carter, you name it so i mean i'm happy to do that i don't mind at all i think the other thing that we should also think about is we obviously have um the metrics list which can potentially serve as a source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it actually served as the inspiration for the creation of all of those issues. So, so then, I, think, so I think some of that is probably baked into the um, individual issues that have been defined. Okay, um, well, so then what I'll do actually today is I'll reach out to Brian, Toby, Andrea, John, and Daniel to ask if they have an opportunity to move forward with actually articulating um, the questions and metrics associated with these particular, with the, the particular focus areas. And I would say that they probably only need to articulate one to two metrics. Okay. Per, fo per focus area. Yep. Okay. Um, because this is this is part of the problem. I mean, we we define the focus areas, and then we've just gone really deep in each of those areas, and we've sort of identified a million metrics, okay. um, but not actually. I guess we've gone wide. We've identified a million metrics, but not actually gone deep on any of them. Yep. Well, yeah, because for the release, they have to have an identified metric. They have to have a a, um, a question that's being addressed, and then they have to have the template. Mm -hmm. have that detail behind. Yeah, that so that's what we really need to do is put together the template for one to two mm -hmm. of the metrics within each of those three focus areas. Right, because building the table doesn't take too much time. Yeah. Like just a, a set of uh, questions that can help with responsiveness or mm -hmm. a set of metrics that can help with responsiveness. It's that template that requires the work. Okay. Does that seem like a reasonable approach to everybody? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it sounds great, actually. Yeah, I'm moving the metrics that we have in issue four and creating the pull request right now. So that way we at least have the list of metrics. And then we need someone to actually flesh out one of them. Um, and then also, I'm just realizing that our next meeting is on the 13th. Yeah. And I, I am going to be on a train. Um, Somewhere. I might be uh, from Edinburgh. Um, there's a UK um, open source awards event that I'm one of the judges for and I'm giving a talk there. Awesome. So I might actually be able to be on the call or I might not. So does someone want to um, I will be on the, I will be on the call, but others could volunteer. So I heard right. Sean just volunteered to lead the call I next time. Too. Sure. All right. I'm going to coordinate the call. <laughs> and could we, um, could we really set it up around like what DNI is doing for the next two weeks, like a hackathon, to, or at least make a hackathon a really important, a big part of that meeting? Yep. Um, 
Okay, so the next meeting we said was on June 13th. Voice of Turn. What are you um, going to do? Extreme idea here. How about we add additional meetings and meet weekly until the release? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It is crazy, but I think that uh, I think that you're probably right. Um, do we want to do a meeting on the sixth at this time? Do we want to add a meeting? I'm in favor. I suggest. Yeah, I mean, I can I can do it. I might have to. I do have a conflict I'll have to work a little bit around with. The sixth is Thursday. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, at this time, I could probably be on a. I couldn't lead a call, but I could probably be on a call at this time next Thursday. Okay, I can I can lead the next one. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay, so I'll just delete that. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna take the action item to set up an additional call. Six. Okay. Um, yeah, we're out of time. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.